Thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'll discuss our recent preprint that indicates the potential for floral nectar to combat transmission of Leishmania. Leishmaniasis is a neglected tropical disease that is the second most costly of human parasitic diseases worldwide, behind only malaria. An estimated 12 million people are infected with over 10% of the world's population at risk of infection and around 2 million new infections estimated to occur each year. <clears throat> Skin infections account for the majority of cases. Although they are seldom deadly, they result in unsightly and stigmatizing lesions, especially when present on the face. In contrast, visceral infection of the liver and spleen, which accounts for around 20% of cases, is almost invariably fatal if untreated, with most cases occurring in children. Hundreds of plant extracts and their constituent chemicals have been tested for activity against the Leishmania species parasites that cause Leishmaniasis. Most of this testing has been focused on development of new drug treatments for humans using plants employed in traditional medicines as starting points in the hope of developing safer and less expensive therapies for the disease. However, Leishmania parasites are not restricted to humans. Like malaria, they are transmitted between mammalian hosts by insect vectors, in this case, female sandflies, that pick up parasites when feeding on the blood of infected hosts and then regurgitate parasites into the bloodstream of subsequent bite victims. But although sandflies are known as bloodsuckers, they, like mosquitoes, require vegetarian fare as well, acquiring sugars from plant sources such as fruits, sap, and floral nectar. This raises the question of how plant-produced compounds in sandfly diets affect infection and transmission potential in this insect host, and how landscapes could be manip manipulated to reduce infection of humans. Although insect stage parasites have been commonly used in screening of plant extracts, the literature on how plants and their chemical components affect Leishmania transmission potential in sandflies is not nearly as deep. Nevertheless, one report from 1994 from the Hebrew University, Schlein and Jacobson, showed that feeding of sandflies with sap of castor and nightshade plants led to more than 50% reductions in Leishmania levels in their guts, translating to reduced capacity of these flies to transmit infection. You can see how the parasites agglutinated and perished in the guts of castor-fed flies. What about the role of floral nectars? The potential therapeutic activity of nectar compounds against parasites has recently received attention in bumblebees, which are commonly infected by a protozoan, Crithidia bombi, that is a close relative of Leishmania. And what are these secondary metabolites? We recently published an article describing the plant secondary metabolite composition of nectar and pollen. I'm including pollen here because although sandflies are not known to consume it deliberately, pollen can easily be incidentally mixed with nectar at flowers, especially those that have been visited by pollinating insects like bees. This incidental ingestion of pollen is a major source of amino acids in the diets of nectar feeding butterflies, and it could influence nectar's secondary metabolite composition and anti leishmaniasis activity as well. We found that flavonoids were both prevalent and abundant in nectar as well as pollen. You may have heard of these health promoting compounds as occurring in tea, chocolate, and red wine. They also contribute to the dark color of some honeys. 
Some of the most common flavonoids in nectar are also those that have shown strong activity against Leishmania. Showing that these anti-leishmaniol compounds are detectable in nectar is a start, but are they present in sufficient quantities to affect leishmaniol growth? Our chemical characterization included absolute quantification of all compounds, enabling comparisons of the concentrations found in nectar with those previously shown to be active against leishmania. I focused on the flavonoids because they were prevalent in both nectar and pollen and have been consistently noted for high activity against leishmania. We found 18 references for inhibitory concentrations of four flavonoids that were common in nectar and pollen. Most of these studies tested the chromastigote or insect life stage of the parasite, which has historically been tested more often than the mammalian form because it's easier to manipulate in the lab. All of these inhibitory concentrations were below 100 micromolar. How about floral nectar? Four of the 26 tested species contain these four flavonoids at concentrations above 100 micromolar, and eight of 28 tested pollens contain concentrations more than 100 times this high. It's notable that plant mesocosms containing two of these species, Helianthus annuus, that sunflower, and Thymus vulgaris, garden thyme, have also reduced infection of bumblebees with the Leishmania relative, Bithidia. These high flavonoid concentrations suggest that these and other flowering plants with similar nectar chemistry could aid in reducing Leishmania infection in sandflies and transmission of parasites to new hosts. anti leishmaniol compounds in nectar were not limited to the flavonoids either. In nectar of three species, concentrations of the cinnamic acid ester Chlorogenic acid exceeded the inhibitory concentrations for two Leishmania species. And note here that the bleeding heart Dicentra eximia, the species with the highest level of chlorogenic acid in nectar, also had the highest nectar flavonoid concentrations, indicating that its Leishmania inhibiting potential exceeds that attributable to just one class of compounds. Nectar of another high flavonoid species, Thymus vulgaris, this is common thyme, additionally contained rosmarinic acid at concentrations well above those that inhibited Leishmania, providing further evidence of this plant's potential to hinder parasite transmission, not just in bumblebees, but also in Leishmania vectoring sandflies. These results indicate that phytochemical rich floral resources could provide an effective but currently unexplored way to reduce Leishmania transmission by sandflies. Stocking landscapes with antiparasitic flowering plants could benefit both beneficial pollinating insects, such as bees, natural enemies of crop pests, and public health. One intriguing possibility is that visits to flowers by pollinators could boost the antiparasitic activity of nectar via addition of chemically concentrated pollen, thereby increasing the incidental ingestion of pollen compounds by sandflies. I hope that these findings promote better integration of plant medicinal chemistry, insect ecology, and vector-based disease control, contributing to new and environmentally friendly ways to reduce the spread of Leishmania in high-risk areas. To summarize, plant medicines work 
against human and insect ills. Flowers treat flies too. I'd like to thank my co-authors, colleagues at the Bee Research Lab, and funders. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to check out our preprint on BioArchive, and I'd love to see your comments in the chat.